Hey YouTube, welcome to my channel. If you're new here and you want more maths content, then please consider subscribing. If you learned something, then hit that like button. I hope you enjoy my video. Welcome to episode three of Graphs of Functions. Today specifically, we're looking at transformations of functions. So let's get right into it. So suppose f of x is 2x squared. What effect would the following transformations make on f of x? And hence write down the equation of the resulting function. So f of x plus two, we know that because the plus two is outside of the bracket, it's affecting the y values and it's doing directly what it says. So we're moving it up by two. So that would be a translation upwards by the vector zero two. So now what would the resulting function look like in terms of its equation? F of x is two x squared, so it'll just be two x squared plus two. F of x minus one, so that's affecting the x values. X minus one is going to shift the graph to the right by one. So remember, when it affects the x values, it does the opposite of what you think. So this will also be a translation by the vector. And here we're moving one to the right. So it'll be one on the x and zero on the y. Now, what does this look like in terms of its equation? Well, all the x values in f of x are being replaced with x minus one. So it's just a recap of GCSE basically. So it'll be two, then we're changing x to x minus one, and then we have squared. F of half x, so it's affecting the x values, but again, it's doing the opposite of what you think. So instead of halving them, we're doubling them. So this is a stretch, we're stretching the x values. So it's a stretch in the x axis, and we say a scale factor two. Yeah, we're stretching it by two. We're not dividing by two, we're timesing by two. Now, what would the resulting equation be? Similar to the one above, we are replacing all the x values with a half x. Yeah, so f of half x. So all the x's change to half x. So it'll be 2 half x squared. Now we can simplify that. So it's 2. When you square a half x, it becomes 1 quarter x squared. And then when you times it by 2, 2 times 1 quarter is 1 half. So we are left with a half x squared as our solution there. Okay, y equals 5 of f of x. So this is outside of the function. So it's affecting the y values. It's just going to times them by 5. So it's a stretch in the y axis. And the scale factor here is 5. Now what is the equation there then? Well, f of x is just 2x squared. We're timesing that by 5. That'll be 10x squared f of minus x. So here, we're timesing all the x values by minus 1. So all the positive x values become negative. So this is a reflection in the y-axis. Well, the equation b, again, we're changing all the x's into minus x. So it'll be y equals 2 minus x squared. Well, anything squared, any negative squared is just positive. So it actually stays the same. And we know this because if you were to sketch 2x squared, it's symmetrical around the y-axis anyway. So if you're reflecting the y-axis, it doesn't do anything. The final one, negative f of x, is timesing all the y values by minus 1. So any positive y value becomes negative. So it's a reflection in the x-axis. Now, what would this equation be then? Well, if f of x is 2x squared, negative f of x will be minus 2x squared. Okay. The diagram shows the curve with equation y equals f of x, which crosses the coordinate axes at the points minus 2, 0, and 0, 3. Showing the coordinates of any points of intersection with the axes, sketch on separate diagrams those four graphs. So part a, 2 f of x. So that's affecting the y values, and it's going to multiply all of them by 2. So anything that gets affected is 0, 3, because the y value of minus 2, 0 is 0. So it's going to have the exact same shape, minus 2, and cross the y-axis at 6. Part b. This is an interesting one because we're shifting the graph to the right by 2. Now, the only thing that gets affected directly is this x intersection at minus 2, 0. If we move it to the right by 2, it goes through 0, 0. So it means it has the same shape, but it only crosses the uh, axes once at 0, 0. Part c f of minus x. So this one you're timesing all the x values by minus 1, so it's a reflection in the y-axis. So it's going to look the same, but we're mirroring on the y-axis. It's going to look something like this. And this will cross at 2 instead of minus 2. 
and 0, 3 does not get affected. The last one is f of a third x. Let's do that up here. Now remember, a third essentially means you're dividing a value by 3, but we know we're doing the opposite. We're timesing all the x values by 3. So the only thing that gets affected is minus 2, 0. Instead of minus 2, it's going to be minus 6. And the y-intersection is still going to be 3. Sketch both y equals x squared, x minus 2, and y equals x minus a squared, x minus a minus 2, where a is bigger than 2, on the same axes, indicating where each intersect the coordinate axes. So, it's only a sketch, but there are some things that they're going to be focusing on that are really important. So, x squared, x minus 2. So, that's going to cross at 0, 0. We've done this in a previous episode and 2. The only difference is because it's x squared, it's a double root. So it's going to look like a quadratic at 0, but it's starting from the bottom. Yeah, so we, we have a cubic, it's going to come up to 0, and it's only going to touch it, come back down, and then go back up. Now the next thing we have to do is we need to observe this second graph and figure out how it relates to the first one, because it looks very similar. What you might notice is that what's happened is all the x's have been replaced with x minus a. Yeah, all the x's have changed to x minus a. So if we were to say if f of x is x squared x minus 2, then f of x minus a would be change all the x's to x minus a. Now what does f of x minus a mean? It means to shift the graph to the right by 2. In the question you can see a is bigger than 2, which is quite important because of when we put it side by side, this point here, when we move it to the right by a number more than 2, it's going to go here. And this 2 is going to shift to a point further out, if I was to just extend this line. And then it's just going to form a similar shape. Now, one thing we could work out if we wanted to, um, and they do require it because they want you to find where it intersects the coordinate axes, is where does it cross the y-axis? Now we can just find a, a small, well we sub in x is 0, yeah, so when x is 0, you're going to get negative a squared and then minus a minus 2. So you have a squared, and here you have minus a minus 2, we can actually factorize out a negative. If you take out a negative here, it will come to the front and you would have a plus 2. And that's where it would cross somewhere here maybe. Remember, it's just a sketch, so the examiner is just looking for the correct shape, really. So, it's going to come up, and it's going to, you want to try and make it look as best as possible. But really, they're just looking for the shape, so it's going to come up. And so the graph is might be a bit more horizontal here, but then we're coming and touching it, and then coming up like that because we're seeing more of the graph on the axes. So we've gone a to the right, so this would be a, and if this is at two, then it's gonna cross here at a plus two. So it's just a sketch. So what the examiner would look for is the shape that is coming up and touching the axes and then going back up, and the correct intersections with the x and y axis, yeah? Next question, describe fully the transformation that maps the graph of y equals f of x onto the graph of y equals f of x plus one. So that's shifting the graph to the left by 1. So this is a translation by the vector minus 1, 0. Sketch the graph of y equals 1 over x plus 1, showing the coordinates of any points of intersection with the coordinate axes and any equations of asymptotes. So this is just a transformation of the graph of y equals 1 over x. So if I had f of x is 1 over x, then f of x plus 1 is replace all the x's with x plus 1. So it's just a shift to the left by 1 of the 1 over x graph, which we've explored. So the 1 over x graph has asymptotes on the y-axis, but when we move it to the left by 1, it has moved to x is minus 1. Then there was also one on the x-axis. Now that can't change yeah, at y equals 0, because if you take a horizontal line and you shift it to the right, or left, sorry, 
is still a horizontal line in the same place. So we could just sketch the graph, it'll look something like this. Same shape as the one over x. Now we can work out where it crossed the y-axis, yeah, because that's what they require. We're going to make x equals 0. When x equals 0, you get 1 over 0 plus 1, which is just 1. That's it. So we've sketched the graph. We've shown any intersection with the axes and any equations of asymptotes. Part C, I'm going to change color for this one. By sketching another suitable curve on your diagram in part B, show that the equation x cubed minus 1 over x plus 1 is 2 has one positive and one negative real root. So this goes back to the previous lesson. We need to rearrange it so that it's equal or we can sketch two graphs and then just observe where they intersect each other. Now we've just sketched 1 over x plus 1. So it makes sense to rearrange this so that on one side is 1 over x plus 1. And on the other side is another diagram that we need to draw. So that can come here and the 2 can come over to the other side. We, so we just need to sketch x cubed minus 2. Now we know what the x cubed graph looks like. But x cubed minus 2 is the x cubed graph shifted down by 2. Yeah, the minus 2 is affecting the y values. It's going to cross that minus 2, say there. So it's a cubic that is going to come across, and it's going to come and then go flat at minus 2, and then it's going to work its way up. Yeah? So it's saying... By sketching an unsuitable graph, show that this equation is one positive and one negative. And we can see that, one negative and one positive. So we can see, so by observing our diagram, there is one positive and one negative intersection. Therefore, the original x cubed minus 1 over x plus 1 is 2, has one positive and one negative real root. Cool. Now this concludes graphs of functions. Stay tuned for when I start straight lines and perpendicular lines and applying it to some extra exam questions. If you enjoyed this video and you learned something, please hit the like button and subscribe for more math content. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.